Hi, this is the overview video for chapter 6. Chapter 6 is a fundamentally important and deceptively short chapter. Each one of the four sections in chapter 6 are very important. So I want you to take your time going through chapter 6. The discussion of electric flux. This is fundamentally important for being able to describe and understand Gauss's law. One thing I might caution you is that with uh, this portion of electricity in particular, we use a lot of the language of flow. I mean, even flux, it, I hope it reminds you of some kind of flow. And these diagrams we draw of electric fields, whether it's a vector field or electric field lines, they remind you of something flow. And that's okay. I want you to use that intuition just to remember in static electricity, nothing is actually flowing. It is just that it's conceptually useful to associate this directed quantity electric field with the imagery of something flowing. So please make sure you don't skip through the first section. It's very important to go through all of this uh, with a thorough understanding. The second section is the actual statement of Gauss's law. Gauss's law is a simple law. In fact, with the correct image of the flux, you may be able to guess at this law just from looking at electric field lines picture. It should make sense. <laughs> um, so it's a simple law. It's a deceptively simple law. And what I want to emphasize at this point is that it is a fundamental law of nature. It is always true. Now, it's not always useful because very often we are not really interested in flux. I mean, who cares about flux? Um, we are actually interested in electric field because it's the electric field that relates directly to electric force. So the usefulness of Gauss's law is in the application and this is where you have to be careful. You need highly symmetric geometry in order to be able to apply Gauss's law. And I will make a separate lecture video for this. Um, please uh, read through this section, this long section, very carefully. Um, make sure you understand every step of the argument because this is a rigorous mathematical proof. It's not just a hand-waving argument. It's not just the intuitive guess at things. It is a rigorous mathematical proof. So it's important that you understand every step of the way. You will be asked to replicate some of these arguments on your exams. So with that, the one last section I want to highlight is the last section. It's another application of Gauss's law. It's regarding conductors. We are going to come back to conductors one last time once we have introduced the electric potential. But with Gauss's law in hand, we can actually now drive some things about conductors. Uh, this statement, you don't actually need Gauss's law for that. This is sort of what it means to be in electrostatic equilibrium. But with the, that fact and Gauss's law, you can drive this useful fact that all the charges are on the surface and that the electric field just outside the conductor is related to the surface charge density that way. So look through that argument. It's a very nice, elegant argument that shows the power of Gauss's law. So with that, we have a long week coming ahead. Um, so I will keep seeing you in the other lecture videos. Bye.